Well, he may not be a household name, but his movies certainly are. And he's from right here, Academy Award-winning director William Friedkin. Friedkin of The Exorcist and The French Connection. He died this week. He was 87. Originally from Chicago, Friedkin's The Exorcist is often considered one of the greatest horror films ever made. His work transformed the world of filmmaking. And here to talk about Friedkin's life and legacy is filmmaker and instructor, instructor at DePaul's School of Cinematic Arts, Andrew Sestoulis. Uh, we thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Brad. I'm, I'm honored to be here to, to talk about uh, one of my favorite film directors of all time. Uh, Mr. Sassoulis, let's begin. William Friedman's life was very much uh, the American dream. He started working at Chicago's WGN mailroom as a way to get his foot in the door, and in a few years eventually started directing episodes of Bozo Circus and other shows. I mean, it's a pretty remarkable tale, right? I mean, it almost seems like a myth these days, right? It's yeah. like the, the, the story, right? You start in the newsroom and you work your way up to the top. I mean, but he literally did that, uh, ultimately becoming an Academy Award winning director, you know, someone who's considered one of the greatest filmmakers, one of, certainly one of the greatest American filmmakers of all time. I mean, I think it's key to understanding his work and what makes his movies so special. You know, he didn't grow up in the Hollywood system. He didn't learn his, his, his craft in the studios. He did it here in the newsrooms and in the alleyways of Chicago, rubbing shoulders with great journalists and writers like Studs Terkel and, and Nelson Algren. And, you know, this is a city that had such a profound effect on him and his work. This is a city, Chicago, I think, that values authenticity above all else. And you see that in his work. You know, he learned to tell stories about people from a street level view, like a good reporter he learned that that stories, the most intriguing ones, are not written in black and white ink, but shades of gray. And I think you see that in all of his films, certainly his best ones. Yeah, life is a gray scale. It is not black and white. And so fascinating, you kind of drawing those lines of how he learned to tell, they, they, really the story, stories first, people, characters first. The industry has been saturated with horror films. Big name directors have been influenced by his work. Uh, so can you take us back to 1973? People were terrified of The Exorcist. It was so in your face, the spinning head, the vomit. Uh, this was uncharted territory, right? Yeah, I think on a certain level, right? I mean, horror movies have existed since almost the dawn of cinema, but nothing like The Exorcist, certainly at, at, at that time. You know, if you think about like the 1930s, you had Universal making all those great horror movies like Dracula, Frankenstein, and The Mummy. But The Exorcist was so, so unlike anything that had come before it. And again, I think it goes back to, to Friedkin's almost journalistic approach to the material. This is a movie that, that doesn't take place in a spooky mansion or a, a gothic castle or, or haunted forest. It's in Georgetown. It's it's in a, mm -hmm. a, a neighborhood like yours or, or mine. It's in a, a townhome, you know, a nice townhome like like yours. Well, maybe not like mine, much nicer than mine in mm -hmm. that movie. But but yeah, you know, I think that and the clinical procedural approach to yeah. this, you know, demonic possession. Audiences were, were unprepared for that. And I, I think also the profanity at the yeah. time was, was yeah. something audiences had never really heard. Yeah, gobs. Uh, quite like that. that. He also yeah. pushed the boundaries of filmmaking, te techniques themselves, from the lighting, the cameras, the makeup. Uh, take me there. What, what would cinema be without what he did to, to revolutionize it? I think it's safe to say it would be a much more boring place. Mm -hmm. You know, again, you go back to his first masterpiece, The French Connection. Yeah. He had made films prior to that. He'd made a few features um, already. But The French Connection was his first opus, his first masterpiece. And The French Connection was this, this cop film that that again took a reporter's view of the events. It was on the filthy, dirty, grimy streets of New York with 
cops and criminals who were 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 not polished. You know, these are ugly people doing ugly things in an ugly world. You know, the handheld camera, the the notorious car chase sequence that has been mythologized as being something that that actually took place. You know, Friedkin and his cameraman and their stunt driver just sped down the streets of New York. It was raw and visceral and violent and and again something that audiences had not seen coming out of Hollywood before that. Uh, has Friedkin had an impact on you as a filmmaker? I know that answer is yes, but I got a couple of questions within this one. And, and what's your favorite film? Has I mean, as you talk, French Connection won the Oscar. Uh, Mr. Friedkin got an Oscar for directing. Gene Hackman got an Oscar for acting. Uh, one of the greatest car chases ever. Uh, yeah. So from you, favorite film and effect on you? Man, um, I think my favorite film is also his favorite film. And it's it's certainly at the time was was a real disaster for him. And that was a film that he made after uh, The Exorcist, a film mm. called Sorcerer. Mm. Um, and and this was a was a total sort of commercial flop at the time and a, a bit of a critical one as well. Sorcerer came out in 1977 uh, and it unfortunately was released like the week after Star Wars came out. So so it really was completely overshadowed by another incredibly significant movie. But Sorcerer is his sort of remake of a great French thriller called The Wages of Fear. And it features Roy Scheider from The French Connection uh, as a part of a, a group of uh, truck drivers who get sort of press ganged into driving very unstable nitroglycerin across some very treacherous terrain in the middle of the jungle. I mean, it is a nail biting, wow. harrowing suspense film. Um, I show it in my class and still to this day, students go absolutely crazy for it. They love really? it. What is that? Sorcerer. Sorcerer. Yeah. It's, it's, it's such an underrated film. And, and now I think it's getting much more of its uh, time in the limelight and certainly with the retrospectives that are going to be going on yeah. I I hope that more people revisit it because he considered it his finest film that is really fascinating uh, and fascinating having you on today thank you for not just answering my questions but telling us a story as we remember Chicago's own director of the Exorcist the French Connection and the Sorcerer I've got to watch that one William Friedkin Andrew Sesulis, filmmaker and instructor at DePaul University, thank you for your enlightening thoughts on, on a, a great local uh, artist this morning. Thanks so much, Brad. Thanks for having me.